Bone marrow cleanse. Bruh. That's me. I'm back. I know what you're thinking. Renton, you're not even the monkey. Fuck, fuck, guy. I hate you. Well, I'm a disciple. Mop, 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 mop. Check out this here. My master drew this for me. Shout out to his family. I really enjoy looking at fake kung fu. So why not do it again? Last time you enjoyed it. <laughs> I asked you guys on Twitter to supply me with as much fake martial arts as, they could, as, as you can uh, 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 find. Let's hope we're lucky. Clip number one. What is this? What is this person doing? <laughs> Not sure if that's Kung Fu, but it requires skill. So in a way, it is Kung Fu, isn't it? China is such a big and a goofy place where you can truly find anything. And I don't know if this is easy. It might require a substantial amount of coordination and skill. So when in doubt, respect. This clip I've seen before. <laughs> Legendary clip. Right, man. If I use the glass like this, I'm going to hit it just right. To be honest, I actually felt these bricks. These are real bricks. I mean, there's there's no joke. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. wow. Check it out, baby. Check it out, baby. How the hell did you do that? I can somewhat reassure you guys that in Shaolin performances, I've never seen fake bricks being used, ever, or even fake metal. Because I'm somebody, as you guys know, I don't sugarcoat Shaolin, and I don't talk crap about it without being able to back it up. You can Google this shit. I'm just realistic about it. And I think if I would only have the slightest hint of something being fake there, I would tell you guys. But never have. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but I've never noticed it in three years. This is unfortunate. It kind of hurts the credibility of a lot of this breaking stuff performance, which I'm anyways not a fan of. Man, how do you recover from this? If this guy is a legit master, that that that's not good. Yeah, can. <laughs> <laughs> this is a truly fascinating. Kung Fu on a pig. Tang Tzu Li Ji. Very nice. The building in the back kind of looks like the training hall, the old training hall in Shaolin. It's nice that they can do a one foot squat on a pig. Requires balance. It's always funny, but it's also there's a seed of skill in there. So, respect. Oh my, oh my, it's on his eyes. Oh my God. Listen, he's, he's breaking bricks as well. I've never seen this on the eyes. I wouldn't recommend. I don't think anyone should ever do this. It's a bad idea. What does exist in Shaolin is they put spears on your throat. That spears aren't sharp, but they are metal. This is one of the craziest, most insane skills in all of Shaolin Kung Fu. Also interesting, although I've seen many performances of that happening, I've never seen it go wrong. I've seen other things go wrong. I once saw on the way to the village outside the temple, I saw a kid holding his eye, got his eye poked out. That was from training this. <laughs> Where do you find this stuff? Maybe this is the female equivalent um, to uh, the male... What did we call it last time? How to Train Your Dragon? Haven't seen that before. But as always, when I see these Chinese playgrounds for old people, I still think this is a, something really cool and I wish we had it in the West. And when I ask for fake Kung Fu, 70% of what I get is the Nutcracker. I feel like you guys are trying to tell me something. <laughs> uh, I already know about the title, what it's about. I could make a video about this guy alone. And I don't know everything about it because I'm not on the Chinese internet. As some of you know, Xu Xiaodong beating up a Wing Chun master and I think among others he beat up several masters yeah ouch it's not even a challenge in China by and large MMA still hasn't really arrived hence the bare knuckles the concrete floor the outfits the weight difference it looks like it's all put together really fast just to settle a bet or a debate things like this which there's plenty of in China right now people like actual fighters challenging people who are obsessed with some goofy stuff that they learned this might be the first step into MMA reaching China or it could be another sign for the Chinese state to clamp down on it because a the Chinese state does not like violence <laughs> and B it exposes and embarrasses a lot of traditional uh, Chinese martial arts which by the way I don't think it really does I see it as a great opportunity good Chinese fighters which they are plenty of have to go abroad to you know prove themselves and be get recognition this should be happening in china and i know what you're saying oh there are some chinese mma leagues that are you know popping up come on there is some movement but i'm not seeing enough movement <laughs>
入侵入我。I think what he's doing is really really good. Chinese people have to wake up. I think MMA and real fighting、uh, is gonna find its way into China as soon as Chinese people will realize that there's money to be made there. The same with Shaolin Kung Fu. Sparring and Qinna and Shui Jiao and Sanda is not found a lot at the temple. It always depends on what master you have, but it's very unlikely that you train this at the temple. As they realize that the market is moving in this direction, I think Sanda, kickboxing, judo will find its way back into Shaolin Kung Fu, and that's good. By the way, real quickly, if you wanna see me do more kung fu、wow. and you like gaming, check out the second channel. Ren Tu. I just uploaded a Cyberpunk 2077 review. Many other videos there. Check it out. Just as good as this, almost. <laughs> From the clothing, it looks like someone from Wudang Shan. The Wudang Mountains are really beautiful. I've never been. They are home to many、uh, Taoist monasteries, where you know I think they have men and women. They have longer hair. I don't know actually if they break bricks in Tai Chi from、uh, Wudang Shan. But this is definitely not the way to do it. <laughs> and also, there's one thing you should never forget. Just because you see someone in a robe, in a Shaolin robe or a monk robe or whatever, it doesn't mean anything. Please, I- I'm-, I'm sorry.、Uh, at this point, a lot of frauds are just buying them, ordering them online, and、uh, walk through the streets with a monk robe asking for handouts. Or to give you little bracelets, and then they want money. Okay, <laughs> I haven't seen this one with your butt against the tree. Not exactly sure what he's training for there. <laughs> but this is all classic conditioning for a small niche of people. This might be useful, but the overwhelming amount of people who do it, there's no point to it. This only works if you do it with an obsession. And then the question is why? The most of the conditioning we did was hitting the arms like down, up, down, up, down, up. This is what we did when we didn't want to do the proper training. Real talk. What? Oh wow! Th- is this real? This is a very strong prayer, and it actually reminds me of before I went to the Shaolin Temple. I had no idea how to properly pray, and you have to know there is a procedure to this. What hand goes down first? Which knee goes down first? I haven't seen anything this crazy in the temple, and the Shaolin Temple is insane with tourism. The temple is always full of people visiting. In front of the abbot, the spiritual leader of the temple, there was a special way that we were told to bow in front of him. It was the going down and then opening your hands, getting up, and doing it three times in a row. When I was told how to do it the first time I saw him, I only did it in front of him once, and then every consecutive time I didn't do it. And I saw that most people didn't do it because it took so long. At a certain point, every time I saw him, which wasn't a lot, but every time I saw him, I just went, "Shuvah." <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, bricks. Not bad. That was good. Yeah, nothing real to say about this. This is not done, but there's something called fa'in in kung fu, which is extremely important. <laughs> Oftentimes, the difference between a Westerner doing kung fu and a Chinese person is in the way their performance sounds, and that is that Westerners are way too quiet usually. My master always told me, when you perform, you're performing a martial art, and dogs, when they're in a fight, they don't—they're not just quiet; they bark, they what's it called, growl. <laughs> they're loud. Your forms have to be loud. Scream from the top of your lungs. Scream. <laughs> <laughs> Has something to do with confidence as well. It's difficult, but once you push through, it's actually very nice. It's part of it. It's important. Steven Seagal, huh? Steven Seagal. Ah, God. I'm gonna give my zenf up about this now. Yeah. Aikido. Hmm. It's very easy to dunk on Aikido, but there's a bit more to it. There's something in Shaolin that is similar. It's called Chinna, which is、uh, learning the applications of certain moves. It's not practiced a lot in Shaolin. Shaolin Kung Fu always moves towards where money is. It's not as interesting to see people do these moves as it is to see them do backflips、um, and、uh, bend spears on their throat. I would never recommend that people learn Aikido when they want to learn how to defend themselves. If you want to defend yourself, you have to learn how to throw a punch, how to kick, and how to block and how to maybe throw. Aikido doesn't do that. But also, nobody in Aikido is so stupid as to think. That when you do these simple grabs, that enemies fly around. They have to do that in order to avoid getting hurt. I can imagine it having a good use for people like bouncers or security or law enforcement when you're facing somebody who's not committed to a fight, but they're causing trouble, and you want to put them in a position where you can control them quickly. Then I think some things in Aikido are not useless. As always, most martial arts have aspects that you can take out and integrate into your own practice that are useful. It's always a question of how much work do you want to put in and how much benefit do you get out, right? Imagine. If you had to practice pressure point kung fu for 50 years in order to be able to use it well, or you practice kickboxing for three months and then you can defend yourself. So after 50 years of pressure points, you are the god. After three months of kickboxing, you are good. What should you do? I think the bigger problem is. That people who practice Aikido think that it's more useful than it is. If you look at people fighting against Aikido people, it very often ends up very sad.
And if you're one of those people who practices martial arts and your master tells you, oh, I could never use it in a fight because I'd kill that person, leave. There's no shame in practicing something that has not a lot of real world fighting use. Shaolin Kung Fu forms, they're not the best for learning how to fight, but they're beautiful, they're difficult to do, they train your strength, your coordination, your speed, they have their own use. But don't lie to yourself and think you can fight. All right, that's it. Follow me on all the socials. It's usually Real Ranton. That's my new name, Real, because the actual Ranton is this. Bruh. <laughs> if you want more Shaolin content, click. And uh, now I'm gonna do the Dr. Mike fade out. Damit du